With year four of AOGS on the horizon, I know it's here already, but I just need to make that joke. Just go with it, please. We're likely about to see the return of the competitive edge and interest of a majority of the Apex player base. This is usually the time when everyone and their dad wants to become the latest and greatest esports phenomenon and for good reason pro league and watching the most elite teams in the game compete to see who ends up being the best of the best can be pretty exciting and if you're one of the people who gets inspired by competitive apex or is just looking to lead more of their teams to victory in ranked gameplay this is the video for you so today we're going to talk about how to be a better igl and team leader which will help you enable yourself to reach success even more efficiently more often than not and i know that might have sounded like a lot of just words thrown together but it's a concept that a lot of people may have issues with getting an understanding of but all my years of leading clans on call of duty and playing and observing apex culminate in teaching you just how to lead now today we're going to be talking about stuff like and on that note let's start off by talking about the role of an igl and what that means now if you have willing teammates you're probably going to perceive this video a little bit differently than if you just have two headless chickens on your team but that doesn't mean that you can't have success in calling your way to a win with randoms or with people who aren't 100 percent communicative i think that word works there igling is typically thought of as being the sergeant in the squad barking orders and giving commands but it's kind of more akin to you being like the guitarist in a band and you all coming together to create one song and the former is a reason why i think a lot of people's abrasive personality shines through when they igl the important thing is that your job as an igl is to hammer in the importance of things like clear communication information good team fighting mechanics and support etc etc there are different methods to the ways different team roles can be played even ways outside of the typical igl fragger support setup but the main part of igling is you playing the overseer role you have to be good at processing and understanding a lot of different types of information in short periods of time things like what guns are shooting and how far the kill feed and its relation to gun audio rotation paths and potential obstacles based on where other teams landed areas that you could be pinched in or cornered if you're holding space and these are just some of the many things that a high ranked igl will have to consider while at the same time focusing on their own aim and fighting and positioning and things like that even if you aren't good or necessarily masterful at all of them identifying your weaknesses and working on slowly improving them over time can be a good way to tackle all of the steps necessary to be a better igl and a good way to make this easier on yourself is to make sure that you establish now, one thing to keep in mind, you are the de facto leader, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're the only one who needs to be heard or even the loudest heard. As I stated earlier, clear lines of communication is important. And one thing you'll notice in pro league is that a lot of times, teams often repeat every statement or command and that's because repetition allows for what was said to be heard clearly and confirmed this goes back to things being clear now you might think that it's hard to process the amount of information in split seconds that an igl may need to do to be able to make adjustments but play calling and making audibles is important to the well-being of your team communication is a two-way street and while you're usually the overpowering voice when it comes to outgoing communication don't let that stop you from being able to analyze income and information as well one thing i also think can be overlooked when it comes to comms is intention of communication basically telling someone what to do is one thing but if they understand why you want them to do that then they'll be a lot more equipped to deal with any variables that may arise from the situation how you expect something to play out can also be important to communicate as you may not always have the time to communicate each leg of your plan as things start to actually play out so the most clear communication of the whole picture from the start leaves you better off in the end so make sure your teammates know the plan and what you want them to accomplish on the current step up until your next point of rest ensuring that you're moving as a unit makes it that much harder for you to be challenged and that much easier for you to challenge any opposition the lone teammate that lags and gets his shield cracked and then pounced on can be the sole reason why you died in 17th place instead of third or even winning the game you may not even have those few seconds to spend rerouting back to your teammate and setting up defenses for a reset and moving as what i like to call a squad of roaches makes this a lot less likely to occur getting shot up in an open area means your teammates have to cross that to get to you and that's no bueno communicating positioning can also be key and i just put an emphasis on sticking together and moving as a unit or at least being aware of each other's positioning for a reason 
In a fight, the Todd is often turned by two teammates catching one opposing player isolated and quickly bursting them before they can react. When you're fighting, you may not always have the time to look at and analyze the minimap, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if you're making calls and playing based off of where you think your teammates are, you need to make sure that you actually know where your pieces are on the board before you start trying to move around. This is an important skill to develop for the future, but either way, it's something that can be compensated for by making sure that you're always aware of where your chess pieces are before you make a move. One of the best things about clear comms is that it makes it easier for you to use. Three pairs of eyes and ears are better than one every single time. So make sure to use your teammates as your eyes and ears to enable you to make better decisions when you need more info. A good team is composed of three parts, all complementing each other and propping each other up to reach success. As the IGL, your job is to keep the team focused and engaged on the task at hand. The more you can do that, the more leeway you have for prepping and simulating for the future. That being said, you also need to be encouraging your teammates to feed you info and be aware of their surroundings. The eyes and ears thing in effect again. Whether you need your teammates to be a static security camera, a motion camera, a bat echolocating, make sure this is communicated so that nothing can surprise you when it comes to lack of awareness. No fucking way, I fell directly in As IGL, you're making the bulk of the calls, but you make the most efficient calls with the most information about your surroundings that can be presented to you. Make sure your teammates recognize their ability to call out and present information. You don't want your teammates to feel like just Fuck because you. you're IGL that you're supposed to be the overbearing voice because you don't want to end up getting in situations where your teammates don't recognize their ability to call out and present information. It makes it a lot easier to end up in situations where things go bad and then it just turns into a whole team argument because people people don't want to open their mouth and you know contribute so make sure people know that they can open their mouth and contribute on that note even though a good team is like a bunch of cogs complementing each other to create a well-oiled machine you still need to remember to Now, if you think of an Apex IGL, you're probably used to what's perceived to be the overbearing, shouting, aggressive playstyle that's become famous or infamous depending on how you look at it. Either way, your own personality will largely determine your own style of IGLing, but your personality shouldn't be something that works at the detriment of your team. Some people respond better to the drill sergeant method of being spoken to and reprimanded. I'm about to say, can we not let them like openly res right in front of our fucking face? While others will quickly be turned off by this and can become rebellious or unmotivated to even listen to you. Your job as a team leader is to figure out how to communicate to your teammates in ways that they can properly interpret. You gotta understand people's personalities because there's no point in taking the Jorgen Von Strangle approach if y'all just wanna strangle each other every game. And I say all this to say, Taking control and having people listen to you is going to be pretty difficult if you don't establish its need in the first place. I see a lot of times where teammates tend to take the co-IGL or providing input factor a little bit too far and start to overload calls. And this can be overbearing and confused. As an IGL, you got to be able to recognize when this is becoming the case and nip that shit in the bud. If you have that role, it's been given to you because your teammates trust in your ability to lead. And this is the difference in IGLing ability, knowing when to delegate and defer as I talked about earlier, and when you know what the best plan is through your own knowledge and experiences. But don't forget, probably the objective part of this section is the when necessary part. Knowing when to be in the field, active and in the action and calling plays, and when to let your dogs run loose is important. If you have teammates that you've selected, then you should trust in their ability to hold their own. So sometimes, you taking the time to take a step back and analyze the current situation as well as future repercussions can benefit your team more than needing to be on top of every little detail in the front of the fight. And eventually, you can learn to start exerting this control over the other teams in the lobby as well. As you fight together as a team and learn more about each other's playstyles or typical player playstyles in general, you'll have more success winning fights through your control of... So to put it simply, knowing when you have control of a fight, when you're at a neutral, and when you're on your back foot is crucial to being able to come out the victor. Being in a losing position in a fight isn't the worst thing in the world, but panicking and not being able to think your way out of it is a surefire way to get sent packing. The beginning of a fight usually starts with both teams trying to find footing and establish a position to fight from, unless it's a surprise close range fight. <laughs> the mess. Neutral footing is usually where teams spend their time poking and sending grenades and abilities trying to force a bad move and get a knock. 
This is where momentum is at, what I like to call a breakaway point, as things are just swelling and waiting for the spark that's going to ignite the fight start and the turn in one team's favor. Knowing when it's safe to take advantage of these moments and increase momentum is key. But just as important is knowing when to hit the brakes and slow you and your team down before one of y'all ends up in a bad situation on your own. Let's be honest, it's extremely easy to get tunnel visioned in this game and lose sight of the little things like your teammates health and positioning, your team getting shot from other directions, the multitude of ways you can be pushed quickly from an unseen position, etc, etc. So sometimes as the IGL, you have to rein your teammates in and slow them down before they turn a bad situation into a worse one. Good control of your momentum helps you not have a teammate blindly running into certain death because they didn't know it was time to relax and regroup. Times like when you all need to heal, when a teammate needs to regroup, being low on ammo or heals and not being able to contribute to a fight, these are all important things that need to be accounted for that factor into your overall momentum. Fighting and being able to fight is the most important thing on this game, but knowing when to fight and when to back up and evaluate your next moves can sometimes be the difference maker in you staying alive and you never wanting to open this game up ever again. And there are a lot of different things that go into being an IGL when you think about it. At the end of the day, you are the team leader, so the team lives and dies with you. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you being the IGL means that everything is your fault, but you pretty much have to take accountability for the fact that you're leading your team into these situations. So being a better IGO is a better way for you to end up being a better team and you guys that have better placement and positioning in your games and all of that kind of stuff. But like I said, this is only one part of it, and a big part of being an IGO is those micro calls and that awareness mid-fight. So next video, we're going to go a lot more in-depth on the fighting aspect of being an IGO and how to be a good battle IGO and make sure you're able to get out of your fights with your life still intact. And part of being an IGO in Apex means there's probably a good chance you're going to end up in a position where you're outnumbered against the rest of the lobby. So check out this video if you want to learn more about how to play well when you're 2v3, as well as this if you want to learn more about the momentum aspect of being a good IGL that we just talked about in terms of something that I like to call push and pull flow, or basically just creating flow states in general for when you approach these fights and situations.